What about everybody, everybody else? I guess Jinx. Oh. Stop no. it. <laughs> <laughs>what is up everybody hopefully you're having a fantastic sunday welcome to galaxy con i am real breaking a i am a pokemon content creator on youtube and i will be your host for this evening today we have a fantastic event for you because we have a lot of amazing voice actors from the pokemon anime back where it all started back in the 90s and uh we're gonna get rolling here because we want to get to your fan questions here in a little bit but let's go ahead and start introducing some people to the virtual stage as uh as we continue on here so uh first to the stage is megan hollingshed hey hey megan what's Woo. up how you doing i'm doing good you doing feeling good, good on the virtual stage here yeah I made <laughs> all it. right <laughs> um, let's go to the one and only Eric Stewart. Hey, there he is. Hey. The man, the myth, the legend, Eric Stewart. How you doing, Eric? I'm good. Thank you. You? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. Thank you fantastic. for asking. I appreciate Megan, it. And thank you, you for being here. I gotcha. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's go into the one and only Rachel Lillis. Woo! Hi. Yeah. Hi, guys. Hey, Rachel. I'm Hello, so glad Nate. you can make it. Thank thanks for having all of us. Uh, this is fantastic. I'm excited, but we still have one more person. One more person. And one and only uh, Veronica Taylor. Yay. Hi, everybody. Yeah. Hey, Hello. Veronica. Welcome. Nice to see you all. We got we got everybody here. We got like every well, I mean, we're missing we're missing Michael, unfortunately. Michael, Michael could not make it uh, at the moment, but maybe he might pop in a little bit later. But we got Veronica, Technical we got Rachel, difficulty. we got Megan and Eric. I mean, <laughs> 25 years of Pokemon. Uh, this, wow. and this, this is amazing. Did you think 25 years? I mean, this is turning into like a, a Disney situation, right? You know, like <laughs> it, it's, it's turning into like its own brand, like this huge brand that's global. Did you think that when you started 25 years ago, this anime coming over from Japan, that it would still be around 25 years later? No, no, no. I don't think so. We actually started doing the show in 98. So 25 years ago, we had no idea Pokemon existed. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> really? To be fair, I mean, you're right. Even in so 1998, I didn't know anything about Pokemon no. when we auditioned for it. Did you guys? No, never heard of it. And there I was a lot of maybe... debate on how to pronounce it. Yeah, I think yeah, it was true. six months before we started working on the show or auditioning or whatever. I was brought in to do a promo for this brand new thing with with Norman that I just had to say coming soon Pokemon and that uh, took forever for them to, for them to figure out how we were going to pronounce it and then of course months later we started to do the auditions I was like oh that's this thing so I had heard about it but I didn't know what it was so I'm, I'm kind of in... no go ahead Veronica go ahead. oh had a lot like Ash would be like I'm a Pokemon trainer and then we had to go back to Pokemon, you know, right. so that A is very important. And Poppy the, Monsters. The <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so so I, I'm curious, how did they originally pitch the idea of Pokemon to you so that you would kind of understand what the brand is about? I'm sorry, did you say that they explained what the show is about at any point <laughs> yeah. during their careers? <laughs> never happened. Wait, never what? happened. No. <laughs> No, so you no, kind of just were else. thrown into it with like the sharks type of situation. Yeah, yeah I think with most yeah. auditions you go and you just, you audition for things. And that's kind of how this happened for all of us. You you audition and you kind of give it your best and kind of imagine what it's about. But mm -hmm. there was never a real uh, description of it, I don't think. No. And, and I also, I remember mean, someone said a bunch of kids travel the world without their parents and collect little animals. I think that was it. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> and also, I mean, is there really anything new in terms of like storytelling? So, you know, it's kind of like, okay, you're a young teenage guy on a journey with your friends and you run into animals. Oh, I've seen that movie. I know what to do here. Right? I mean, <laughs> really, right? Uh, I still don't know. Do they evolve into things? Do we train them? Yes. Do we, do they, and they evolve? Of course. I just want to interrupt <laughs> real quick because we have, uh, we have Michael. Michael is here. Oh, so uh, yeah, there he is. Yeah. Michael, on the street. Oh my gosh, 
Oh, oh my god! Walking, walking the streets oh my of gosh. New York looking for a Wi-Fi connection. Hi Rachel, how are Hello. you? Hi Michael. Where I where you are you in? Time. You look fantastic. Hello everyone. So do you? Very hi. Well. Yes, hi. Are you wow. on the Upper West Side? I'm on the Upper East Side. Upper East Side, okay. Yes, I'm moving on up to the East Side, like the, the Jeffersons. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm sorry to stop the flow. This is very You're exciting. Kind of like... It's kind of like it's TikTok video over here with my. <laughs> right. Who knew we were get a vlog situation? It's like the opening credits of your own sitcom. There. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I think with the trench coat, it's a little Inspector Gadget, which yeah. is not what it's about. Okay. I was going for the impress file. I don't think I made it though. Yeah. Oh, nice. No, no, it's good. Oh, do we we could do a man on the street type of situation like here. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I have to figure out where you are. are. Everything's good now. Everyone from the Pokemon crew is well. Everyone's looking very good. No, well, thank you. Thank you. That's what it's you all are about. Too, man. So do you. Yeah, we're just uh, feeling fielding some questions about uh, when. How did they explain this to you? What this show was going to be about? Did they explain it? Well, you know, not really. You know, as I had said last time, the only thing that I really knew that I remember that I knew about the show was that it sent kids to the hospital in Japan. Right. Yeah. And, right. Uh, Seizures. Yeah. 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 And so we didn't know. And in fact, I just want to get a quick plug in. Uh, for anyone who's watching today, I will have the first episode of the long-awaited, by very few, uh, Pokemon podcast. Uh, if you text me at originalpokeman at gmail.com, I'll get, send you a link to give you the first episode. At this rate, I should have all the episodes covered in about 2250. Uh, it's really <laughs> taking a long time. Fantastic. It's like the other side of the okay. wind, Pokemon. But anyway, the only thing that we knew was that it was... Uh, it was the kids in Japan, and, and as I said last time, I said to Larry, who was a partner in the in the studio that worked, I was like, try to get as much money up front because 13 episodes is the longest that this could possibly go. <laughs> and if you remember, all of you, we didn't, or I didn't, know, know how to pronounce Pokemon. And yeah, I we were just talking sure. about that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, Michael, yeah. real quick, they're asking me if you can turn your phone landscape. <laughs> there we go. Oh, that was cool, though. Nice. I just assumed that the smaller the picture, the better I look. No, no, you, <laughs> you look good. You look fantastic. Long. You look fantastic. We're going to actually jump into some uh, fan questions because fans right. are ready to go with some questions. So if we can get the first one uh, up on the board here, this is I from. I think Michael's going to interview them on the street. <laughs> I was honestly about to say, idea. like, what if we could just find somebody that was a Pokemon fan and just ask them a question? Uh, totally. Just so we... spit and you can find one. You've just well, added no, a whole spin, new a whole new don't thing spin. to this to this uh, to these panels. Is the man on the street? Yeah. Yeah. We might be on something it. here. Honestly, I, I don't know. Like, here we have Michael on the street. <laughs> Michael on the street. <laughs> so we have our first question from Sean. What would your Pokemon character's favorite holiday tradition be? Hmm. What would your Pokemon oh, character's characters. favorite holiday tradition be? Well, I mean. Hmm. Do they ha I mean, I love the Pokemon Christmas bash, but that would be our actors' favorite holiday tradition as Pokemon actors. Mm -hmm. um, listening to Pokemon Christmas bash is one of my favorites. Oh my um, I don't even know what that is. Um, every, yeah, every every year I, I get another post that says, this is the greatest Christmas album ever. I just got one today. <laughs> it pretty much is. Yeah. Um, I think James would hand uh, hang um, uh, bottle caps as ornaments on the trees. And then, and That's remember good. he collected and his year bottle cap. An email saying, "Gee, we should get royalties for that." Did you get any royalties for that? <laughs> <laughs> royalties. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, what are royalties? That would have been so cool. Look, They're yeah, in the same packet that explained what Pokemon was about. <laughs> 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 so I, I, I think it's twenty five years later. We don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's unanimous. Think, like the Christmas bash is probably the yes. Let's say that listening to the Pokemon yeah, Christmas sure. bash. Yeah. yeah, and Ash, I think, would be decorating the house with Mr. Mime for sure. Yes, for you sure. always oh have gosh. to bring yeah. up that scary thing. <laughs> I know. That's just for you. I know. Uh, let's. Oh, we got an impression <laughs> going on here. And, and Mr. Mime would say mime. Like what? Why? I know. How mime. ironic. Yes. Yeah, I know. Why would he speak? But yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's go into the next, next question, question here. Uh, this is from Aaron. 
favorite season of Pokemon you starred in? Johto. Season. Ooh, Johto yeah. season. Oh, I see. Going as the whole. Oh, that's good. Mm. I like See, Johto. I always thought I like it was one long style. season. I didn't realize that there was ever a break. So I guess the it early could, seasons. It could feel like that, yeah. yeah. When the theme song changed, that's when they... Oh, <laughs> good, good. That was a that's a good point. Oh, that's a good <laughs> yeah. point. Uh, but yeah. I like I like Johto. I think I thought uh, some some of my favorite episodes are from. The, I'll go with Johto. Season. Show us Johto. Yes, <laughs> I'm gonna agree with you too, Johto, for sure. What what episodes were the Johto episodes? Like what number? The best. The beginning ones. Oh. Oh, okay. Right. Um, Orange like, Islands. I'm, Orange Islands, right? Yeah. I'm thinking like maybe second or third season ish, and um, of course I'm drawing a blank, but. Uh, it, yeah, for for the I think the Orange Islands were during there, and um, there were a lot of backstory episodes about the characters. And um, oh, is that where we learned about like James's childhood and stuff like that? Was that in Johto? Um, with Jessica? I think that was the first season where oh. yeah, when Jessica first appears yeah, yeah, and okay. they try to force him to marry her. Yeah, I think that's yeah. the very first season. I think oh, that's, that's right. Is it Kanto or Kanto? How do you pronounce that? Canto. 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 Yeah. Canto. Yeah. I can't nice, remember. I'm impressed. I'm very impressed. <laughs> I uh, oh, I don't know why I know these things. <laughs> I was I I started going to conventions. Like every, everyone's been um, like a lot of voice actors have been going to conventions for a long time, and I wasn't going to them. And, and then I started attending them just a couple of years ago, and I found that um, it helped if I watched episodes beforehand. You know, basically, See, I thought that would help like me jumping and directing, but I didn't do that right. either. So, because yeah. <laughs> I remembered some things, but not everything. But it helped right. refresh my memory. <laughs> right, right. But that's my favorite. Because for yeah. for people watching, like we would go into the booth and we would read our parts and not necessarily know the whole episode. The director right. would right. fill us in as much as the director knew. Um, about the scene we were in, but we would never, we would rarely get the whole picture. Right. So it, Even it sounds after like, we finished recording, yeah. So it sounds like Johto and then obviously Kanto as well. I mean, that's a classic, uh, you know, growing up in the 90s for me, Kanto has a special spot in my heart, but Johto also has another very special uh, spot because as a kid watching it and not really knowing anything going on behind the scenes, it was really interesting to see like, wait, there's more than just 151. Like there's more worlds, mm -hmm. there's more Pokemon, there's more places to go. So it was really like kind of, it, it was very exciting as a kid to just know, oh, there's more, there's more out there, just like the real world. So um, right. That's what I that's what I loved about Johto too. So uh, uh let's go ahead and go into the next question. Uh this is from Jason. What first got you into voice acting? So how did it all start? Who wants to start? Well for um, me it was Pokemon. I was uh, huh? I thought I'd be a, a stage actor and I was at the time. And then uh I auditioned for Pokemon. I was like, wow, there's this. So, um, yeah, that was my story. Mm. I uh, wanted to be a voice actor ever since I knew that there was such a job as voice actor. Um, I don't remember uh, this, but my one of my sisters uh, told me that when I was a toddler, I was watching cartoons on TV and I said, the characters, the characters don't look real. Are they real? I mean, I don't understand this animation thing because they don't look the same as the live action. So she explained to me, she goes, well, it's animation. There are people who draw a bunch of pictures. They put the pictures together and then that makes a flow of movement. And then, <clears throat> and then she said, and then there are people who go into a booth and record voices for the characters. And as soon as she said that, my eyes lit up. And, ever since, and then I said, oh, I want to do that. I don't remember that, so she does. But um, that was just something that was always in the back of my mind. I didn't think I'd ever get to do it, though, because it's, um, wow. you know, it's, yeah. it's not the easiest thing in the world to freelance. It's, it's, but um, I'm grateful that I've had that experience. 
Um, I started as a musician. I wanted to get a job in a recording studio and I got hired as an assistant at a great studio called Real to Real in New York. And I learned from age 18 working there, everything from casting and production, how to edit on tape, how to do all sorts of things. But we mostly worked on radio and TV voiceovers. So as time went on and auditions, we, we were running there, um, I would jump in the booth and fill in for people who didn't show up and slowly but surely, the clients were picking me on the casting tapes. And um, I was like, this is a strange career. I, I, of course, knew who, you know, some great voiceover people throughout my, you know, childhood. You know, I, I watched a lot of cartoons, but I didn't really think that that was like where I was going to end up. Um, but then it made perfect sense being a touring musician and being able to do voiceover work from anywhere mm -hmm. that there was a studio or a microphone. And um, singing has a lot to do with, uh, you know, your, your pitch and inflection, and that's what speech is as well. So it made a lot of sense for me to say, well, this is something I could do, but I had no idea that that would be my career after 30 some mm -hmm. odd years. So <laughs> yeah, but commercials were first. Uh, I have a bachelor's and a master's in acting. <clears throat> um, and so I've always done a lot of voice work along with theater and then some film and TV. Um, when I was in grad school, I actually did a short play by John Peelmeyer that is a guy who's just changing the TV channels and you have to switch from voice to voice as if, you know, as because you are the TV channels. Cool. And that was one of my first um, forays into this. I did a, a radio play for WGBH also in grad school. That was my first professional, like, I guess, purely voice related job. Um, then I got to do the voices for I was in the Batman stunt show and I got to do the voices for the the I guess the voiceover that was sent around the country to the other shows um, and then how I got into cartoons specifically I was just uh, I was working with an acting coach for a monologue for something I was auditioning for and he happened that day to get a call from someone that he worked with and they needed someone who could do young high girl voices so I auditioned I got cast in that um, that was Central Park Media and then it just kind of uh, you know I networked along after that. I mean, those are all fantastic stories. And uh, it sounds like everybody, you can tell that you're all passionate about what you do, which mm -hmm. is always great to see when you admire somebody and, and they're also passionate at the same time. So uh, thank you all for sharing <laughs> that. Let's, uh, let's get into the next question here. This is from Henry. Who was everyone's favorite character to voice act doesn't have to be a Pokemon or doesn't have to be Pokemon? I'm going to say Ash is definitely one of my favorites to play him for eight years was pretty awesome. And to kind of really get to know him. Um, if I have to choose one at the moment, I'll choose that. We love Ash Ketchum. Mm. That's a tough one. I don't like to make a choice between Brock and James from Pokemon or Seto Kaiba from Yu-Gi-Oh! Because those are the big three for me. So I'm going to say the one of my favorites because it was finally my chance to play a a character that reminded me of my neighborhood um, where I grew up, though I didn't speak with that accent. Um, I always wanted to do something in anime that had a New York, Brooklyn accent. And for some reason, I, I never got cast in any of those roles in our cartoons. So when I got a chance to direct Viva Pinata, I cast myself as a uh, it's Becky Pudgeon who talk like Joe Pesci the whole time like this. Cause I was like, look, if anybody's going to talk like this in a cartoon, it's going to be the guy that actually grew up in this neighborhood. So uh, he's one of my favorites because I'm, I'm imitating like everyone from my old neighborhood. Yes. <laughs> you and, you and Maddie were very Brooklyn represent. I think. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. There's a strong element. Mm -hmm. Was Matt very much Brooklyn? Yeah. 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 Could, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yep, she was. But uh, yeah, I, Rachel, I think. What about um, you? I, I think uh, Jesse. Well, it's the same as like Eric and Veronica are saying. I really, really liked Jesse and Misty and Jigglypuff and all you know the various Pokemon. Uh, I got to play because it was just all over the map in terms of just experimenting with different voices and personalities. And, uh, got got a little there. There was a range to play with there so I had fun doing that I really liked it I think um I my favorite thing for those characters to do was explore their pasts whenever you got the backstory on somebody so, so um 
So it's hard to pick a character that's a favorite, but I think my favorite story that they were in was when you found out more about them. Yeah. Yeah. I I loved um in Bleach, I play Rangiku, who's um mm -hmm. super feminine and super kick ass. Um and then she has these really like silly, crazy scenes. So she just goes through so many different things. It's super cool to play her. Um, so she's probably my favorite, um, just in terms of getting to do a lot of different stuff. In Pokemon, one of my favorites was uh, Cassidy because um, I got the direction to kind of be like Jesse, you know? So I got to kind of imitate Rachel, which was super fun. Oh. But also, I know, but um, but also put my own twist on it. And I was in the mood, or I'd just been thinking about um, uh, a Midlantic voice, a sort of a um, uh, Catherine Hepburn, Rosalind Russell, you know, say, what's the big idea? So, oh. uh, so she, she sort of came out half that, half Jesse, which don't really go together, but. Um, say you guys what do you think you're doing um mm -hmm. and that was a blast god she was fun i wish cassidy had come back more often yeah and actually that worked really well with my harvey firestein butch yes butch like this the whole time <laughs> yeah. <with you. laughs> what a bizarre pair yeah, right <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And remember when that team, when that other team rocket was introduced, they were like, Eric, so we want you to play Butch. And I said, well, I'm, I'm Brock and James. I don't know what other register I have left. And I said, <laughs> can I be Harvey Firestein? They were like, uh, okay. <laughs> so r random choice, but I'm glad it stuck because it's m the most ridiculous voice for that type of a character. Right. Totally. Yeah. Did it fry your voice? No, it's actually in such a weird place. It's just, yeah, it's actually easier for me to do that than probably some of the more normal, you know, things that you, that I would do. The yelling of Kaiba is probably more uh, vocal strain than uh, than talking like this the whole time. You know, another <laughs> New York thing I had to throw in there, <laughs> but it worked out. Yeah, it, it worked. Was out. It, it made was sense for some reason. It worked. Yep. Yep. Um, so just good. to kind of bounce off of that question, like when you had to, anybody uh, can, can jump in on this, um, when you had to actually voice a Pokemon themselves, such as Jigglypuff, um, did they give you any direction? Since they just really say their names, right. you know, they might say their entire name mm -hmm. or just part of their name. How did you know when to say the entire name or part of the name or like how to make emotion come out of from just saying a name? Well, I mean, I you, if you can if you can speak nonsense, you can still convey emotion. I mean, uh, all the double talk stuff, you know, all the fake the fake accent things like Sid Caesar would do or whatever. You can still convey anger or sadness even when you're not really speaking a real language. So you give me, you know, the the, the syllables of Squirtle, you know, I can give you a, a whole monologue about how she left me and broke my heart, and I'm only using those syllables. I mean, that's just that's. I think that's the, the key to acting, right? Because mm -hmm. half the time, mm -hmm. the words we are given when they are in English, we still don't understand what they mean, but we still have to try to <laughs> make sense of them. So, um, and in terms of being like how we were chosen for that, a lot of times we were coming in to do our human stuff and mm -hmm. they would listen to the original Japanese for register and say, this character is in a lower register or something. I think Eric, you should be able to do mm -hmm. this, you know, mimic the sound um, that, that they used, you know, the register. Um, and then just use English. So at least that for me, that's how that's how I, I interpret that. So I mean, I was all of the Squirtles in the Squirtle Squad episode. There's like what six of them talking the whole time. They're talking, and that's all they say. It's just I chose different registers for them to keep them different. But there's no English in there. It's mm -hmm. all it's all like okay, now he's angry, now he's sad. So yeah. I can't remember what the script looked like. Did it? Say Most of the time, it said react. They Sometimes react, on the right hand right side, it would say something like angry or sad. Uh, That's what I, I know I think. sometimes yeah, right. with these kinds of things, they'll they'll put up like that. Sometimes people will write in what the the message is. You know, they, what right. the, the, but that, we never got that. We didn't, right? Yeah, I don't no, remember no. that. So much of this is cold. Yeah, you just go. They would run the animation, and you would just Take go look. go with yep. it. Yep. And mm -hmm. um, I remember during the first season when during the whole how do you pronounce Pokemon 
Um, what are we what are we going to call Ash? Because they hadn't settled on a name and we had to go back right. and re-record a lot of lines. Um, because I said, okay, his name is his name is Ash now. Um, so I think it was like the third time we recorded his name. And then um, one day I remember um, on, they, Michael was directing and he said, well, we have some Pokemon that we'd like you to audition for. So I was in there, like Eric was saying, for my human stuff. And uh, they said, well, I'm gonna, we're going to show you the animation. And they showed me Charmander up on the screen. And Charmander was just kind of moving around and doing stuff and showing Charmander's general demeanor and attitude. But they didn't know Charmander's name yet. So oh. Nintendo hadn't come up with Charmander yet. So wow. they said, um, yeah, it was tricky. And they said, well, the Japanese name for Charmander is this. So you can use those syllables. Or you can just make something up, like whatever you think would be fun. So um, the whole uh, auditioning process was improvisation and going cold into something and saying, well, this Charmander looks kind of gentle, kind of sweet, and it's going mm -hmm. through a difficult time in this episode. So that's that's what you had to go on. And the other ones, I, and I tweeted about this recently, which is why I'm, I know about this. Um, the other ones were Cubone and Oddish. They didn't know those names either. So they said Japanese names or random syllables. So um, it was so new <laughs> mm -hmm. that you know, just kind of thinking on your feet was was very much part of that. But fortunately, you know, the anime the, they gave these characters so much personality that it was something that um, was, and you know, we're working together and doing something new. It just kind of came together like that. Mm -hmm. Did you were you able to watch or listen to the Japanese? Yeah, they would play. Remember. They would play the oh. the, the reference yeah. for us. Yeah. Of course, okay. I will take some uh, credit for coming up with the uh, water gun attack. Uh, for Squirtle. <laughs> that was not a sound. That was not sound design. That was me. I I actually do the water gun attack. Thank you very much. That was not in the Japanese. <laughs> Doesn't need water to do it. Bravo. Awesome. <laughs> He does his own stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's it's interesting to hear that not, not everything was set in stone when it was presented to you. Oh. That, that you had to do a lot of right. improv and like like the like the water gun and or the you know the uh, the Charmander situation. That's really yeah. interesting. Or there's some extra flaps here. Make up a line. You got it. No problem. There's a lot of that too. I mean, early on there was a lot of stuff where you know you lean on us as the actors to sort of like. Can you make this work? This line is not really flapping right, or look right, at the, where right. the brakes are doesn't make sense. Can you do something? So there's a lot, but it's all like the teamwork of that, right? You know, you're thinking on your feet like that. So, and and mm -hmm. I, it, it's not really you can't really blame the 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 English team, the you know English speaking team for that because a lot of the information wasn't given to them in advance. It would be like here's right. a couple episodes, and you wouldn't know where things were going, you know, or or how characters develop. It was really like, take a guess, you know? So there was a lot of that going on. And there yeah. was a sense I got, I, I, we should ask Michael, but I I had the sense that they weren't trying to be um, in, in, in precise um, lockstep with the Japanese, that it was gonna take on an American tone sure. and we were gonna change the writing in certain ways. Whereas like um, a company like Bang Zoom, you, I don't know, Veronica and Rachel, if you've worked for yeah. Bang Zoom, they are like, this is going to be exactly how it was in Japanese. And we've got a person who speaks Japanese right here to make sure that we're doing honor to the original. So every company has their own take well, on it. Well, that's also because a lot of the shows, I mean, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, American television, Saturday morning cartoons. So you try to localize it right. so that it seems like it is, you know, from this country. And right. Of course, when we re right. sent it overseas, we the French would do what they would want to do. So, so taking it away from being a Japanese dub was the goal, so that right. it just seemed like it was wherever you were, it was your show. So, yes, that's why a lot of that stuff changed. And you know, humor is also very regional. Um, and there's certain things that are mm -hmm. not appropriate for our country to you know to do that might be appropriate in the Japanese original, um, especially Saturday morning cartoons. You know, James, I think at one point had a, a gun in his hand in the original and they had to change that to a finger, you know, things like that. So 
you know, that doesn't work on Saturday morning cartoons. Welcome back. I just keep feeling I want to hear boom, boom as it's law and order. And he's like, yeah. is it? <laughs> <laughs> Every time he pops well, in, talking about guns on Saturday morning. That's what I just heard. I I like, where's Mariska oh Hargate? I yeah, I Michael had to. Michael had to go solve the crime, and now yeah. he's him. <laughs> That's what it's like. It's like right. Oh my god! Now are you sitting on a park bench? I am in Central Park. Yeah, I, I was at a wake. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. And I don't oh, know sorry. Why, whatever. But, but anyway. We're glad you're here. Oh, yeah, the answer is Joto, yeah. I think, is, would be the answer. Yes. That's <laughs> yes. That is, that is okay, correct. Great. <laughs> that is correct. Well, you're, you're you're just in time for the next <laughs> question. So you'll actually get <laughs> the question yeah, this time. Hey, Eric, people are, feeling, uh, are feeding me squirtles in uh, Central Park. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking yes. about that so much. Uh, New York squirtles. Yeah, you got to watch out for the New York squirtles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're not afraid of anybody. That's right. I've got uh, more bursitis in my arm, too. Yeah. If anybody has any ornaments, any fan wants to That'd be great. Oh, um, speaking of improv, Eric, I was going to ask you really quick. Were you the one that came up with the uh, frying pan into no. the drying pan? Was that, no, was no, that no, you? No, 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 um, Don't blame we, him. No, no, you got, no. So uh, we should ask Michael about that. So I actually, I think the last time we had this panel, I, I wanted to know what the original Japanese was because... You know, you see the action of putting the frying pan over his head while it's raining. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of being addressed in the original, obviously, right? You think? Mm -hmm. um, but my line kind of rhymes and it's this playful, fun little thing. It's actually the Shakespeare Pokemon. It's the most requested line <laughs> of Brock in like all, yeah. of all. So, um, but you should ask Michael about that. The I had no idea about any Pokemon. of this until my dad told me about this. <laughs> Last time we talked before, I, I had no idea that there was this was like a meme. Oh yeah, it's so yeah. It's yeah, big. I've signed, I've signed frying pans for fans. <laughs> um, no, it's it's nuts. It, it's absolutely nuts. Like that line, and it's that one is a very very popular line with me. Yeah, but yeah. He, he wrote just, you wrote it. I think it. in the original it was just like, hey, I'll use my I'll use yeah. my frying pan for an umbrella. I think that was it. Which is not really as funny. No, that was just hilarious. It doesn't roll no, off the tongue the same way, no. no. But as you know, there are certain <laughs> fans, uh, not of the show that we did, but are fans of the original that that that, that do not like that we no. put any alleged gags or gag-adjacent lines in there. Uh, and I can understand yeah, just... that, you know, but uh, <laughs> remember we would get, you changed I know. it, it's terrible. Yeah. And I know. a lot of the things I have to say, and it will be addressed in this amazing podcast that I'm doing, one episode per year, uh, that I just I didn't know a lot of things and I still don't and I made tons of mistakes in the scripts I'm sure mm, yeah. and many more than I even know uh, but that was the thing to kind of make it uh, uh, and, and it was a little uh, as Bob Hope used to say Bob Hope used to say bald on gags I mean a lot of the things were very straight you know they were just lines like oh we're go let's go into this cave now rather you know very on the nose kind of things which I tried to change especially as as time went on and I could see that it, it wasn't really, no one was asking me to stick to the original script so much. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's so many of those funny lines mm -hmm. to me um, were really for the parents who had to sit and watch the show with their kids right. over and over again, or go to the movies. Um, you know, I've been asked like, you know, what's your, what's your favorite line that you've ever said, which might even be one of these questions that comes up. But when James is in the movie with the unknown and he sees all of those things floating around and says, I haven't seen this many strange letters since I placed that personal ad. I mean, that's <laughs> hilarious. That, I think Kathy Borland wrote that. I mean, that is hilarious. There's no way a 10 year old kid went, that's funny what they did. Yeah. Oh, James just said something. I'm going to laugh. But you know, <laughs> mom and dad were like, this James character is quite funny. You know I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But that, yeah, I mean, so so many great lines. But no, I can't take credit for, for I mean, very rarely were there any ad-libs except for not the ear. Every time that Misty grabbed Brock's ear and pulled him off uh, screen, I did throw that in. It was never in the script. That's interesting. <laughs> we, we got about um, 10 minutes left. So let's go ahead and uh, get uh, just a couple more questions in here. Right. Uh, this is from uh, Jenny. Do you have a favorite Pokemon theme song from one of the seasons? First song. I want to be the very best. That's it. That's my favorite. Yep, I love that season. song. Yes. I don't cry every time I hear it. But 
<laughs> that guy, the guy is still goes to the conventions and say, uh, I was at my first live convention in Las Vegas, and yep. the guy sings the song. Yep, I just did a convention. Yeah, Jason as well. Page. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. There is something about that song. Because- Oh, it was so great. And I hear it. Cars are playing it when they drive by now because people are out playing Pokemon Go. And it's so great. Oh, it's really nice? energizing. And I love it. Eric, it, did it, people ask you if that was you? Yes, all the time. And you tell, tell them, yes, it was. I yeah. sign an autograph and say, <laughs> 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 all right, so we all agree the original one. I mean, but Johto was pretty good too. Johto well, that, is, is that was a the one with the ba da da ba da da ba da da, right? The second um, thing. Um, da, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Right? It's a yeah. whole new world we live in. Oh yeah. I like the season where I dodge yeah, I the Ottoman and don't Pokemon trip over Pokemon. it. Oh wait, that's Dick Van Dyke. Sorry. <laughs> Great reference there. Great reference. Thank you. That's season two if you're not familiar with it. Okay. <laughs> Let's jump into the next question here. Yeah. Uh, this is from Megan. If you were a Pokemon trainer in real life, what Pokemon would be your starter? Come on. Psyduck. There it is. Yes. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Psyduck. Nice. I, I am learning about Psyduck now. Because I thought he was so cute with this little head. I thought, I'm confused too, Psyduck. I'm confused too. (laughs) Did you guys know Psyduck has headaches? And the worse Psyduck's headache, the more psychic it becomes. Yeah, more powerful it becomes. Yeah, Yeah, the more pain, the more power. Like, what is this? It's crazy pants. So (laughs) I'm curious. Yeah, it's a good answer. It's a powerful one. Yeah. Yeah. What about everybody else? I guess Jinx. Oh, stop no. it. <laughs> we don't like, know much about for obvious reasons. Actually, I think there's a federal law against Jinx now. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? Oh, no. About? That was so but Lord. Jinx was in a Christmas episode, I think. <gasps> Holiday so Jinx. I think so. I think so. And this goes back no. to my point of why Holiday we needed to change some things from Japan. Holiday <laughs> Jinx. I'm was so Jinx based, was Jinx was based like a, on like, like a. a like a mythological West. It yes like it was crazy, totally yeah. that crazy wrong totally like just yeah, totally wrong it was wrong on about four levels yes should never <laughs> have been in that show i want to know more about this mythological character oh, was yeah. it based on i'm thinking where did it where did it come from like uh i don't know it, 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 it it's nothing like anything al I jolson was like it was, like, kind of it, was it was so wrong it was so wrong it was wrong yeah yeah I mean, but they didn't register with when they, you know, the original Japanese. It's just like, oh, yeah, they we're doing this. And we were like, what? Yeah, no. Yeah. Not good. Not good. Is what about Jinx still you, around Veronica? or no? No, they don't have no, Jinx anymore, so. right? He, 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 no. Yeah. I, um, I don't like to choose between the three actual starters. So I'm going to stick with Mr. Mime because most Stop. people, I'd go Mr. Mime and Snorlax. <laughs> oh, Snorlax is a good one. Yes. I like Snorlax. Yeah, nobody uh, could defeat me. <laughs> you know, what, Rachel. What about yourself? Um. Oh Lord. I, I think I, I would think I might pick Charizard because I like. I mean, not Charizard, Charmander, because it would evolve into Charizard, and hopefully, and I really like Charizard because you can fly on it, and yeah. you don't have to deal with TSA. Yay! <laughs> very good reason yes. oh yeah i have no reason it's other good. than i i it's it's, uh, squirtle was the first pokemon that i voiced and he wears ray bands so he's extra cool so that's yes really wild. very cool yeah. we could hang yeah. well i'm glad at least somebody said psyduck i'm happy about that yeah yeah um, there he is behind you oh, oh yeah there you go. you're right <laughs> yeah. you know. Never <laughs> know. it's my favorite In the criminal justice system, the people are represented by two separate yet equally important groups, the police who investigate crime and the district attorneys who prosecute the offenders. These are their stories. (laughs) (laughs) I got really confused. Oh, yeah, that was fantastic. That was fantastic. Did everybody see that? We've been hacked by the ghost of Jerry Orbach, I guess. Wow. (laughs) I about went into panic mode. I was like, oh, great. We've been hacked. Okay. Oh, great. That was fantastic. <laughs> We're good, though. I, well, I Michael, think we have time. Michael is doing a plug. Yep. Michael is doing a yeah. plug for his show. 
Yes. We, we have time for one more question. Is that what you're saying? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Time, time for one more question. Uh, this is from Chelsea. If you could have any power that a Pokemon has, what would it be and why? That a Pokemon has. You well, know I have what? A question. Go ahead. Oh, uh, I, I have a question. Is, um, is there any Pokemon that teleports? Abra? Kadabra. Abra. I, I want teleportation oh, ability. So whichever, That's a good one. That'll save a lot of time. Yeah. 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 Avoid the TSA. <laughs> <laughs> it's really the TSA we're, we're focusing on. It's really the TSA we're focusing on. Yes. No, no offense to the TSA or anybody who works no. for the TSA. It's just a long process. That's all. I mean. It, yeah. Well, in the just, pandemic, yeah. we out of the airports. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go with Veronica's choice and say Mr. Mime because I'd like to be better at cleaning. Ooh. Mr. Mime see me. Mr. Mime cleans? Oh, yeah. 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 He cleans yeah of the, course. The, the, What's he doing over at the house? He's got an apron on all the time. Yeah, that's what Mr. Mime Holy. does. He's cleaning mm -hmm. the house. Yeah. I'd like that's to be why I like Mr. Mime. Yeah. Cleaning. Okay. Yeah. Wax on. <laughs> wax on. <laughs> I would choose the power to license my name. Ah. There you go. <laughs> That's nice. All right, so we know Michael's choice there. License, licensor? Yeah. You could license your name. You Licensing just Pokemon. need someone to buy it, right? Yeah. And say it over and over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's it. So, from uh, uh, Veronica, I, yeah. were you going to pick Mr. Mike? Yeah, Mayan? well, no, I wasn't actually. No. Um, you know, the thing is, every Pokemon speaks their name, which essentially is its own language. So I would want the ability to understand and speak every language around the world. That's my superpower that I would want. Oh, I like that. Uh, yeah, uh, that's it. And, and I think Meowth was pretty good at understanding every Pokemon as well. Oh, Meowth that's, always... right. that's true. So does that yeah. mean I want to be Meowth? I mean, Maybe. Yes, it does. I do like cats. Um, Megan, what about you? I don't know. I don't know. That's back good answer. Okay. That next panel. Next panel. <laughs> yeah, next panel. <laughs> next panel. That's how I get invited back. <laughs> Always no. leave them wanting more. That's the key. <laughs> Always leave them wanting more. Uh, right. Well, it looks like our time is up. I want to thank all of you for being here, and I want to thank you for a fantastic childhood as well. Oh. Because if it wasn't for all of you, then uh, I, I, I don't know if I would uh, I would be as, as in love with Pokemon as I am today. So thank you all for the, oh. the time and the dedication that That's you all put nice. in. So thank thanks. you. And I thanks everybody for much. joining us. Good this has been a really thank, hard yeah, thanks, year. Thanks everybody. And, um, yeah. Merry yeah. Christmas, happy holidays. Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, and happy new year too. Yeah. Happy, happy holidays, holidays everyone. Year. And uh, I just want to say thank you all for joining us here uh, on this lovely, lovely Sunday. You all have a fantastic day.